Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Bressman. I'm a movement disorder specialist and a researcher at the Mount Sinai Health System in New York City. I'm also a scientific advisor to the Michael J. Fox Foundation. I specialize in treating people with Parkinson's disease. I also conduct research to increase understanding of Parkinson's and help develop new treatments. I am especially interested in the genetics of Parkinson's and I'm not alone. For the past decade or so, genetic research has been opening up a whole new world of possibilities for diagnosing and treating Parkinson's. Let's start with a little Biology 101. What is genetic research, and why is it important to people with Parkinson's disease? Genes are inherited bits of DNA passed down from our parents. They make us who we are, from our eye color, to our ability to curl our tongues, to our risk of disease. Genes also guide researchers to better understanding of disease. But how? Disease arises when the cells of our bodies don't function right. And often this happens because of changes in a gene. Researchers call this a mutation. Not all mutations are bad, but some are, because they increase our risk of diseases, including Parkinson's. For a long time, scientists thought Parkinson's didn't have a genetic connection, but that has changed. In 1997, a research group at the National Institutes of Health discovered a connection between Parkinson's and a rare mutation in a gene called alpha-synuclein. This mutation caused alpha-synuclein to clump in the brain and body cells of people with Parkinson's. In 2004, another genetic mutation linked to Parkinson's was discovered, this time in a gene called LARC2. And around the same time, scientists uncovered a Parkinson's connection with mutations in a gene called GBA. Now more genetic contributors to Parkinson's are still being uncovered all the time. In most cases, however, having a mutation does not necessarily mean you will develop Parkinson's. Also, these genetic mutations are pretty rare, with exceptions in certain groups like Ashkenazi Jews. In fact, if you do have Parkinson's, the odds are low that it was caused by a known genetic mutation. So you might be wondering, if genetic mutations are rare, why does this matter to me? If you remember just one thing from this entire conversation, I hope it will be this. Advances coming out of genetic research today offer one of our best chances to develop drugs that will help everyone living with Parkinson's, whether they have a mutation themselves or not. Many of the problems that take place in body cells are the same in Parkinson's disease, whether or not a genetic mutation caused them. And from a research perspective, that is huge. Let me explain how we go about it. By studying Parkinson's genetics, we can get closer to critical understanding that advances all drug development. Just a couple of examples. Some people with mutations never go on to develop Parkinson's. Does this mean they have some other difference that protects them from getting the disease? If we could identify that, perhaps we could find a way to protect more people from getting it. And we can look for clues about the variability of Parkinson's disease. Perhaps there is a genetic aspect that makes one patient have more tremor, while another has mostly gait and balance issues, or cause different people's disease to progress at different rates. As a scientist, I encourage you to participate in genetic research, including research that examines your specific genetic risks. But there are important personal considerations that need to be thought through when it comes to genetic testing. Understanding your results, what they mean for you and your family, and how to talk to your loved ones. Genetic counselors can walk you through this process. Let me introduce a couple of people who have gone through this themselves. First, meet Ofer. Hi, I'm Ofer Nemirovsky. I live in Boston with my wife and three children, and I have Parkinson's disease with a GBA mutation. I was born in Israel and came to the States when I was four years old, grew up in Queens, New York, and went to high school in the Bronx at a math and science high school for nerds like myself. After college and business school, I found my way into venture capital and spent 30 years as a high-tech investor. Based on standard genetic testing, which my wife and I did before the birth of our first child, I actually knew about my GBA mutation years before I was diagnosed with Parkinson's. When you're living with a genetic mutation and a disease, you think a lot about your children and their future. 
Our kids range in age from 16 to 20. Now, having the GBA mutation or any other Parkinson's risk factor does not guarantee getting Parkinson's. It increases the risk, but it's still only about 10%. Parkinson's genetic testing does not give you a yes-no result, but your genetic information combined with the genetic info of your family members added to the genetic info of hundreds of other patients and relatives can help solve the puzzle and potentially lead to a treatment or cure. Anyway, after thinking about this a lot, I began looking for research opportunities. I started out by donating blood and skin cells, and now I'm participating in the first clinical trial testing a drug specifically designed to target GBA mutations. Being on the front lines of research helps me feel that I'm proactively dealing with my disease today and gives me a lot of hope for tomorrow. Maybe I'm being naive, but I'd like to think that by the time my own kids get tested for GBA mutations, Parkinson's won't be as big an issue, in some small part because of my decision to take part in research today. Thanks, Ofer. Now meet Patty. Hi, I'm Patty Meese, and I live in Arizona with my fiance. I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2008 and later found out I had the LARC2 mutation. Before Parkinson's disease, I was living the life, single and dating. I had a lot of friends and a great job. But after diagnosis, I didn't know what in the world I was going to do with the rest of my life. I became more isolated and I stopped exercising. I soon realized I needed a change of direction. Believing that knowledge is power, I decided to educate myself and the way for me to move forward was to embrace research. Now, it might sound selfish, but I began just wanting to help myself. I wanted to find the latest, greatest, most cutting edge ways to feel better mentally and physically. It can seem scary to find out about your genetics, but I was able to talk to a genetic counselor who answered all of my questions. Soon, I felt confident and comfortable with that information, so I decided to approach my family. I got everyone together. I told my four sisters and my daughter that I had this genetic mutation, and I asked them if they would consider volunteering for genetic testing. I was delighted with some of their answers. I heard things like, we want to help, and we know how important this is to you. It was amazing to me that by my taking action, others were also inspired to get involved. My daughter and one sister found out that they have the LARC2 mutation, so now, my sister's in the study with me in Arizona, and my daughter is in the study in Chicago. It's been so meaningful to me to realize that not only can I help myself, but I'm able to help others get started. The genetic study has been really therapeutic for me, and it feels a bit like a gift, because I do want to make a difference. I hope that by my actions, it will help everyone with Parkinson's find ways to live a better life. Thanks, Patty. Engagement is contagious. As Michael J. Fox says, the answer is in all of us. Genetics is a big part of what is making researchers, clinicians, and patients optimistic that we are closer than ever to breakthroughs in treating and even curing Parkinson's. Let's keep marching forward together till Parkinson's is a thing of the past. Thanks for being part of it.